Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me on another video to discuss a new story that's becoming more and more talked about. But before I get started, please hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel to stay up to date on all my videos. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be discussing the current news story out of Massachusetts, the search for Anna Walsh, a 39-year-old mother of three. According to the police, Anna lives in Coos and commutes weekly to Washington, D.C., where she works as a property manager. It is being reported that she had scheduled to head back to D.C. on January 3rd after the New Year's holiday, but bumped up her plans to return two days earlier due to an emergency at one of the properties that she manages. According to reports, on New Year's Day, she left the family home around 4 a.m. Apparently, she ordered a car from a rideshare company that would take her to the Boston Logan Airport, which is approximately around 40 minutes from the house. However, there is no record of Anna getting on a plane that day or thereafter. In fact, police were unable to confirm she made it to the airport or even got into a rideshare vehicle at all. All they were able to find in regards to the airport was that she did indeed have a plane ticket, but it was for January 3rd. But it doesn't seem like she boarded that flight either. Additionally, there are no records of a pickup from that house from either Uber or Lyft. So she supposedly left on January 1st, but there's no trace of it. However, she was not reported missing until January 4th, which was three days after she supposedly left the area. On January 4th, her workplace reported her missing as she had yet to show up for work. Additionally, this is the day that her husband finally reported her missing as well. Her debit and credit cards has not been used since January 1st, and any digital footprint of her posting online or using her cell phone to make calls or texts have been non-existent. During the course of the police investigation, they found that her phone did ping near the area of their home on both January 1st and January 2nd, which is interesting as the husband has said that she supposedly had already left to return to D.C. One thing that I personally find interesting is her non-existent use of any electronic devices. Anyone who's a realtor has a family member or a friend that's in real estate or property management know that they're going to have their phones on them 24-7, whether it's checking emails, responding to text messages from clients, or, you know, just taking, making calls. You're on your phone. Someone in the real estate industry just isn't going to not use their electronic devices. Like Even if you were on vacation, you're going to be on your phone doing some aspect of the jobs. And I know this to be true because I'm a realtor and I've had to write contracts while I'm waiting at the airport for a connecting flight. So while the police are still searching for her, on Sunday, they searched the home and found blood and a bloody knife in the basement. Additionally, they found via surveillance that her husband, Brian, had gone to Home Depot on January 2nd and bought $450 worth of cleaning supplies that included mops, a bucket, and tarps. To me, that screams red flag. Who buys that much worth of cleaning supplies? Store prices are high, but that's just a crazy amount to me. Next, let's take a look at the location authorities know that she was last seen, the family's primary home, 516 Chief Justice Crushing Highway in Cohasset. Cohasset is a small suburb of Boston with a population of a little over 8,300 people. According to the U.S. Census data, the median home value there is $875,000. According to Zillow, this home is a colonial style home that was built in 1984. It has four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, and is around 2,788 square feet. There is a fenced in backyard with an in-ground pool. Additionally, there is a basement in the home that is partially finished, according to the online listing. This basement is where police found the blood, and a bloody knife on Sunday, January 8th. 
The 5,000 monthly rent was rented out to the couple in March of 2022, right after they sold their previous home at 725 Jerusalem Road in the same town. That home was sold on March 17th, 2022. And according to real estate documents, it shows that Anna was the sole owner of that house. She bought that home in November of 2020 for 800000 and then sold it in 2022 for $1,385,000. So she definitely made a profit off that real estate property after she renovated it. And in a bizarre twist, this former home broke out in flames on Friday. While police have come out and stated that they don't think that this had anything to do with it, they're not related, it's a really, really weird coincidence. This story is such a mystery with the fact that they were renting this home, but she was mainly living in Washington, D.C. at their apparently own townhome during the week and was coming back on the weekends. It just seems so crazy to me. And I'm sure we'll be learning more about this story in the coming days. Um, What do you guys think of this developing story? Let me know in the comments. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.